Okay, but the change again has got to come in the people in the first herd and this huge mass of uh, uh, mainstream TV watchers. The alternative people has at least woken up a little bit, right? Okay, let me read from the, my article. The FOIA documents, Freedom of Information Act documents, emails and transcript I wrote about in the NRC cover-up article have been out for at least two weeks. Remember, this was back um, about a year ago. The three groups that petitioned for them to be released have remained quiet, very quiet, choosing instead to post the documents online. There was a, a House of Faust place that hosted a, a document or a number of the FOIA documents, and a couple other places posted them up too. So you didn't even have to go to the NRC at first. You could find other places that just... Um, I you know they copied the whole document somehow or whatever, but they were hosting the document itself. You didn't even have to go to the NRC website. Choosing instead to post the documents online and see who runs with it. Informable.com carried several editorials, but nothing that connected all the dots together, certainly not in a big picture. And there was a couple very well-written editorials that when I and my mom read them, we were shocked. And we were like, holy smoke, this is a huge cover-up. This is huge. And I said to myself, look, I've got to write about this in a way that expounds upon it and shows the big picture so people understand what does this mean. Just showing a little screen capture and saying FEMA was told to stand down, that's good. But let's show them the big picture, the nuclear industry, the suppressed technology, the corrupt political system, the monopoly, the control, the information suppression. All of that is what I wanted to give them. Okay. Let's see if I can put bluntly what others will not say. The executive branch and multiple federal agencies, agencies tasked with keeping the American public safe, did their best to hide and to cover up information about a deadly radioactive plume and ensuing fallout that was headed for the west coast of the United States from Japan. And I might add, not just for the west coast. I've got a screen capture where they're talking about 35 rem per year to a child in Alaska. Yeah, that's right, 35 rem per year to a child in Alaska. And obviously they had to suppress it. They had to have a blackout. They had to crush the information flow because you would have a panic. You'd have a mass uh, um, protest in the streets. Nuclear plants would be surrounded. Americans would say, enough. We're not going to wait for Oyster Creek to have a meltdown. We don't want to mark one over here to meltdown. We really don't. I know I don't. Furthermore, I don't want Progress Energy to build one anywhere near me in Levy County. All right? Seriously, it's insane. And you know what? In this in the in the shutdown and shutdown, which is the PDF I spoke of, it's a book where I'm going to do. Believe me, I'm going to do at least one broadcast on it. You can and see in there they complain that you're not even allowed to contest the building of a nuclear plant <laughs> based on the dangerousness of them. Right? I mean, I have to laugh because it's absolutely insane. You cannot tell them you don't want it built because they're very dangerous. That doesn't work. It has to be an environmental issue like in. Uh, Levy 1 and Levy 2, they're saying it draws too much from the water and it screws up the environment. They have to attack it from a, you know, a different angle, an angle that I think really isn't nearly as strong as the uh, bleeding obvious angle that you know, Three Mile, Chernobyl, Fukushima, Hanford, all these other sites. There's Just go in and look, Google uh, any kind of radiation, um, what's the word for it? They've got the Level one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a place that logs all the incidents, nuclear incident, however you want to phrase it. And go and look into that. There's been plenty of them. Bomb tests were just inundated with radiation. There's every reason to shut it down and no reason to keep it, uh, keep it going. Except unless you're in on the power side and the control side and you're making a lot of money from an energy monopoly. Okay, so these agencies were tasked with keeping us safe, but not only the West Coast, Alaska, Hawaii, uh, Canada, the East Coast, here in Melbourne, Florida, I have readings. And if you look at some of the plume models, some of the leaked TEPCO, some of the NILU, it's shocking. It's shocking what we were hit with. And we weren't told in the underground people were looking at some of these models before sites were shut down and sites mysteriously stopped modeling all of a sudden and said they weren't going to do it anymore. So what you saw was a huge information blackout. The fact it was real and did arrive, referring to the plume and fallout, radioactive plume and fallout, is proven by samplings from milk, vegetables, and rainwater. Even though EPA testing methodology and actual capability were questioned, independent sources verified the fallout. To those who say radiation does not travel in a plume or that fallout is a local phenomenon, there's an excellent distillation of the book, Chernobyl, Consequences of the Catastrophe for People and the Environment, at globalresearch.ca that proves otherwise. And I have a link to that actual uh, PDF you can read. That book is free and available online. It's carried in the New York uh, Academy of Sciences, if I'm not mistaken. It's very reputable. 
uh, Yablokov and the Nestorinko couple are very reputable scientists. And again, it confirms it's, it's the methodology and the results are congruent with what we're finding now with the Sherman Mangano is a study that was done after Plumgate. And I also have a link on uncovering Plumgate, which is a WordPress blog, a link to the bird study where a guy had done a similar study with birds, however, on the West Coast during Chernobyl, and he did the same study during Fukushima. The results are the same. So I put it to you, it's not a, you know, we're not arguing did we get hit or how much did we get hit. We got hit and we, get, we got hit hard. Are we going to have access to the measurements that the government, that NIE has, that the rooftop grabs from the nuclear plants here? Probably not. And keep in mind, as I always say, they talk about cesium, they talk about iodine, but the big ones they leave out, certainly plutonium. They don't talk about MOX fuel. Number three was MOX fuel. Number four, I am told, very reliable source, they're worried that in the spent fuel pool above, they had some fresh uh, rods of the MOX uh, type, of the mixed oxide plutonium uranium fuel, and those had not been used yet, but they were storing them up there, getting them ready to go into a MOX fuel cycle in the number four. So it's like the worst possible situation with number four. And I've been clear with number four, and some of these screen captures we'll look at. I'll make sure not to run too much over because we want to talk about other developments in the alternative media. But some of these screen captures show that number four was a big worry that there's a melt core melt through the concrete floor, multiple three, four feet thick, and down onto the torus, the big circular thing underneath the reactor. And that's bad, very bad. I'm not Again, I'm not an expert. I'm a layman. I'm learning as I go. But I can tell you from what I've picked up, that's from, and from what I hear in the documents, they don't speak in that in good terms. All right? If that happens, it's bad, very, very bad. Just like number three blowing up with a MOX fuel, and you see those particulates, the heavy chunks just falling off in the video I show, and the video you can see all over YouTube and online, it's just dispersed for miles around. It's a major... One thing I wanted to mention tonight was you don't not only see the cover-up in these documents and all these agencies and all these people, DOE, working to hide this plume and fallout, but you see that when there's a meltdown, a massive catastrophic one like Fukushima, you really see how truly bad it is. In their own words, them talking about it. And, and they know they're being recorded. But even still, remember the severity and the criticality of the incident. At some point, at some times, it's going to slip their mind and they begin to speak about it freely. And in those moments, those ones that aren't redacted, we really get a picture of the bulldozers bulldozing over uh, stuff that's so, the shine is so great, they have to bulldoze it into piles of rubble and cover it with dirt to knock the rads back enough for, root, for workers to even be willing to go in and attempt any kind of, um, uh, what's the word for it, uh, stabilization of the situation is what I'm looking for. So that's revealed in the documents as well, not just the cover-up, but just how bad it really is. And Chernobyl, same thing, cover-up there in the cost and consequences of the catastrophe book. They, they, they're very specific and very clear in the beginning, in the, in the Beginning of the book, they say it's difficult to get information early on after Chernobyl because the government would go into hospitals and seize records, and, and they did all sort of information suppression back then as well. And same as Three Mile Island, but over time, things leak out. Now, back to my article. The evidence obtained in the Freedom of Information Act request indicates that right from the start, the NRC had a clear idea of the significance of the disaster that was unfolding, but concealed the truth from the American public. The results of the plume and fallout can be measured in the rise of infant mortality rates. Cells of unborn and newborn children are dividing at a much higher rate than those of a mature adult. Thus, the amount of damage is greatly increased and hence more detectable. And this is discussed in that document shutdown with the court case from the late 70s. Conservative estimates place the number of U.S. fatalities following the Fukushima accident at over 18,000. And that's, and I should specify there, and that's 12 weeks afterward, and that's a secondary, and there's a tertiary study that came back and said it was more like 22,000. So they kept, they'd rather err on the side of being conservative at first because the nuclear apologists and the trolls and chills jump on your butt if you make a single mistake. Even if you're just a long guy by yourself, you know what I mean? It's crazy. So we try to be as accurate and, and go conservative and then bump our estimates as we, as we refine and become more accurate than now they're saying in the 12 weeks following 22,000. How many could have been saved by simply warning folks to stay indoors? Again, at Taiwan had rainwater warnings and kept kids home from school when California had 10 times the level in, in rainwater. That's a, a, a clip I've got, a screen capture of a, 
don't know if it was uh, Alexander Higgins or E&E News, but yes, that's exactly what was going on. We weren't given any kind of warnings at all. Why didn't a FEMA emergency broadcast warn athletes to practice indoors or not at all? What about pregnant women? Why were they not given precautionary measures or rainwater warnings or green leafy vegetable warnings like France did and, and the United Kingdom gave rainwater warnings like France did? And they're further away from us than the Pacific jet stream. A word about the energy industry. Technology suppression is the name of the game. How else do you maintain an energy monopoly? If Stan Meyer's water car or the Japanese production water car had ever made it to market, Lots of super-rich energy barons would have lost all their power and money. History proves they will stop at nothing to maintain this monopoly. Why are solar cells restricted if they are more than 20% efficient? Why are power systems greater than 70% efficiency restricted? I give links to all this. This is out of the uh, Wilcox book. It's a Union of Scientists uh, study. Just consider how difficult it is to control a nuclear chain reaction that boils water, turning a turbine, and generating electricity. Einstein once said, quote, nuclear power is a hell of a way to boil water, end quote. But what if you could turn your home into a solar generating station and bypass these monopolies? What if there were clean energy, but it was not in a form that could be easily monopolized? <laughs> I mean, this is true. This is exactly what's going on. What if the dirty and dangerous energy sources were the ones the elite could control? Thus explaining why we continue to suffer from incidents like the BP Gulf oil disaster, Three Mile Island, or Fukushima and why solar cells are restricted to 20% efficiency. Telling the truth about all this is very dangerous. A Japanese research scientist was recently found suicided with a plastic bag over his head after posting results of his tests online. I remind you, this is from about a year ago. There are others who have died under mysterious circumstances as well. I linked to an article where this seems to be the thing. Again, if you're not, if the whole lot of attention isn't being paid to you like myself right now, I'm relatively unknown. You can broadcast freely. I don't feel, you know, for a time I did because a lot of strange things happen and, and, you know, I've got a video where I say, yes, I sit here with my shotgun every night at that point because at some point, yes, I was maybe not paranoid enough. If anything, I wasn't paranoid enough, but, now I kind of understand the levels at which they begin to give you a hard time. And you really have to begin to have people pay attention to you for you. It's some kind of violent to feel threatened by actual real violence. I mean, I know Pete Santilli can say he's going to knock all my teeth out from 3,000 miles away, but one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not worried about that. We all know what we're worried about is the Bill Cooper-type incidents is what I'm speaking of. Now, back to the article. In any case, the emails and conference call transcripts reveal the cover-up. There can be no other conclusion, even with heavy redaction. The plan was to do everything possible to limit the public knowledge and paint as positive a picture as possible. Saving the nuclear industry was paramount. Talking points were, are, still a big factor. They knew the plume was coming. And I should say saving the nuclear industry was paramount, even to the point where I read and I have a screen capture where they talk about, the guy says, well, if you're worried about having <laughs> voice angst, some quote, unquote, favorite. angst over moving Navy ships around, don't run the worst-case scenario model. And the other guy responds, that's what we were thinking, too. And I've been very clear on this, that my thoughts are the exact opposite in that. Screw nuclear power. Screw that. The lives of the sailors are paramount. There is nothing of, I thought that's what it was all about, right? Again, I want my system to be love-based. I love people. I don't always agree with our military per se, but the soldiers are human beings. I don't, the last thing I want is them to get dosed with rads on their nads. I want them to be safe. I know the women don't have nads, but the men have nads and they'll get rads. They got rads on them. That's just a fact. They're suing TEPCO now, right? And so some of the stuff contained in there, like I'm hinting now to the point of saving nuclear industry is so important. Ah, they don't care if some sailors get radiated. They really don't. They don't care if the plume hits us over here and 832 infants die in 12 weeks. No big deal. I mean, it's nuclear power. Back in 79, shut down. This particular lawsuit shows us exactly what they were worried about, not in the form of a meltdown, but low-level ionizing radiation over time. That each plant is these scientists going and tell you that it's impossible to keep all of it from coming, any of it from coming out. You cannot contain it. Some will always get out, and you will always have deaths as a result per year. We sacrifice lives every year. Why? You ask why, but why, Hattrick? Why? Well, it's for monopoly, folks. There's this stuff they got you can spray on your house now and hook the positive and negative electrode to it. The walls of your house, the roof of your house becomes the solar panel. And if you remove this 
restriction on patent and patent suppression. Again, from my own experience, my dad's patents are being suppressed. Why do I say that? Well, he can get a patent, but the government won't help him to produce and take it to market. He can write a proposal. They will even have a press conference and say, look, we're going to have these scientists, not just my dad, there's other scientists there as well. They say they're into alternative energy and what have you, and we're going to look into this and so on. And there's a big press conference, and it hits the newspapers, and the George Bush and Obama administration look very good. But, but in the long run, that you don't get a call back. You don't get the funds don't come your way, and it doesn't happen. And they just used you for a nice uh, bit of um, propaganda for publicity purposes only. For publicity, then they have no, uh, they have no. Uh, uh, there's not going to be any attempt is what I'm trying to say of them doing the right thing. They're just not. It's a simple fact. They're, new systems will not come into play. Why? We're not love-based systems right now. It's on greed. It's on money. It's on control. And that's what not sharing with everybody. No, me, 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 me. That's why we got nuclear power. The vast bulk of Americans if you must be selfish. I can only conclude that. They're extremely selfish to the point of as long as you give them their little scraps off the table, that's enough to keep them quiet. Just enough not to rock the boat, right? Okay, they knew the plume was coming. Talking points, big factor. Press releases, big factor. Uh, watching social media, spending millions to see what little guys like Patrick Penry are saying about them, big factor. Uh, opening up blogs so they can counter what I'm saying, big factor. Uh, there's a full court press sending their trolls and shills and apologists into threads. Even I had a Julia Mitchell and her cohort, Dan Opdyke, try and say that impossible radiation could come from over there and that Fukushima was a hoax. They were trying to even say it didn't even happen. It was crazy, right? And some people will fall for that. Some people, that's you would say, well, why would someone say something so insanely crazy and bizarre? Because, just like Pete Santilli and other broadcasters know, some people will believe just about anything you tell them. And that's what George Bush said. Concentrate on those. You can fool most of the people most of the time, and those are the ones you need to concentrate on. That's important people know that. That's not just a joke or a fancy schmancy quote from George Bush. That's the real deal. That's a psychological, sociological, propaganda-type insight into how they think about the sheeple. Right? That's us. We're all sheeple to some degree to them. You may be considered an intellectual goyim, okay, if you rise to the level of my, myself, right? But you're still a sheeple. And they don't care about you. They don't care about us. If they did, the fact of the matter is I wouldn't be talking about Plume Gate. After Three Mile and Chernobyl, we'd have shut all these things down and said, hey, let's free up all to Let's get this Tesla technology, the stuff they seized upon. We only returned his family a, a, a box, a couple boxes of effects when they finally got Tesla's belongings and papers back, right? There's no effort to warn Americans. No one told folks to stay indoors or to not be out jogging or playing sports. Not even the first three or four weeks when the heaviest amounts are raining down on us. Obama and family spent some time in South America around the 18th of March. So they were safe during the worst of the plume. Well, what about the rest of us? And what about the agencies involved that conspired to hide this from the American public? Agencies whose purpose is to protect Americans. Is their real purpose just the opposite? To protect the corporate and protect the state at all costs? What about all the press agencies and alternative media that remain silent on these matters? They have access to the emails and transcripts like anyone else. Are they bought and paid for? Are they afraid? Remember, these are my thoughts from about a year ago, and the documents had been out in 2011. Let's see, June, July, late June, July of 2011, the documents are coming out. By 2012, come February, March, some of the good stuff is out, and I can't see any reason anymore why some of these bigger alternative sites, like specifically InfoWars and Prison Planet, and these were two words that were removed from the bottom of my article. I'm almost to that point where I'm going to read that. Those things were removed from this article by Intel Hub. At the very least, I accused them of protecting Alex Jones and Natural News and, and covering up for them. And what was the cover-up about? Well, the Natural News and InfoWars Prison Planet have no intention of reporting on the level that I am about Plumegate and what's contained within these documents. Again, the world's largest provable conspiracy, provable to date, bigger than 9-11, proof in the documents, in the story, how many people died? Way more than on 9-11. Wait, I'm a 50,000s my estimate now, but like I say, at 22,000 after 12 weeks, okay, and that's a conservative estimate. Bobby One's uh, future predictions, if you follow out on the graph and look, and, and he does excellent detailed, very detailed work, very detailed, 1.3 million by the year 2030. Again, that's an estimate, but 
what we see is clearly just like Chernobyl as we read the cost and consequences study, we're over 900,000 cancer-related fatalities. And that's just part of it because we have to then keep in mind the, uh, the deformities, the birth defects, all that kind of stuff is, a, is another whole other set of problems that we don't always draw attention to. Right? And while I'm on the subject of, of a little side problem, that's not even a little side problem, I shouldn't, that's a huge one. Another huge side problem is a depleted uranium we're dumping all over the Mideast in the form of spent tank rounds and munition rounds. It's sick, absolutely sick genocide and the birth defect and the water supplies. And what it's effectively doing is ruining those places of the world for thousands and thousands of years. No one will be able to live there. It'll be a wasteland, kind of like that video game Fallout 3, right? It's a pretty good video game, by the way. Okay, back to the article. Credit must be given to informable.com for posting the original editorials and to Eni News and Alexander Higgins' blog for following suit. Everyone else in the mainstream and quote-unquote alternative media appears to be silent. There were a few others that hosted some of my articles, um, what really happened, and I was told Jeff Rents, although I went back to what really happened, couldn't find the article, and Jeff Rents, there's one in there that looks like it could be mine, but it's so incredibly buried. And i got a video out. If you look at it, it is to laugh. It is to laugh. You literally got to cycle down a page of thousands, uh, and you have to find it in this tiny script. It's, gosh, <laughs> wow. They're not really doing their job, a lot of these people. like that. And you can't tell me you're that ignorant or that incompetent or just can't fit, because look at the way I've done just using the free WordPress blog. I know I'm, we've got the two-hour thing on on blog talk, which you can do 30 minutes, and I was doing that for free. I was utilizing every option and YouTube, and I was making waves so much. Alex Jones calls me an obscure blogger. He won't mention my name, but they use my quotes, right? I went from nobody, okay, to being quoted by National News and then, well, kind of by InfoWars, but they took my name out, but Alexander Higgins' name there, right? It's a long story. We're going to get to that later. We're going to get to that. Coincidentally, the WikiLeaks document dump and Koran burnings, again, remember this is about a year ago, are taking center stage while the cover-up that killed over 18,000 is not. And I put it to you that these little distractionary psyops are ongoing. They are constant. They are ongoing. Your tax dollars are funding them. What is their purpose? The biggest one, the largest purpose, the most important purpose is distractionary, diversionary, plain and simple, plain and simple, headless alien babies, Bigfoot in a spaceship, anything to keep you freaking distracted, right? The WikiLeaks has a document dump right around the same time as the FOIA dump, some of the bigger ones. And, and is that coincidental? And what's come out of the WikiLeaks document dump? What's come with, out with Anonymous? What have they ever done? What have they ever hacked into? To, have they proven JFK was killed by the government or some conspiracy? Nothing really big, nothing at all. In fact, in Plumegate documents, I've shown you much more damning, damaging evidence against the government, against the corporatocracy, against this giant conspiracy uh, than any of these other guys have. And that's my opinion, but I feel pretty strongly on that. I'm just didn't get in this game today. Before I started writing, you know, I've, I, I'm very well read. I will do a video showing all the books I've read so you can, if you're interested in getting the same information that I'm getting, like, well, I'm holding one right here in front of me, an excellent book I'm in the beginning to read now. It's by Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman on killing, the psychological cost of learning to kill in war and society. Hey, maybe you can hear the cars buzzing next door. I call it a bee's nest over. they got little tiny pipes on the tiny little street cars, the Fast and Furious. They've been watching the movie Fast and Furious, and there you go. Maybe it's going quiet now. I can hear them through the headphones. That's how loud they are. It's incredible. So a lot of distractionary, diversionary, Koran burnings, WikiLeaks document dumps, anything to keep this from the coming into the homes of Americans to find out what really the damned diabolical cover-up that's con cost. I mean, you couldn't have saved everyone but rainwater, stay out of rainwater, crikey, it washes down in the rainwater. We know that. You know, potassium iodine to protect the thyroid. They were picking it up to go to Japan. Did the sailors get it? Because if NRC was picking it up before going to Japan... But you said you had angst over moving Navy vessels around over a worst-case model run. To me, I'm thinking to myself, something's wrong here. Did the NRC guy pick up KI to deliver it to the USS Washington or the USS Reagan and the other ships that were there? Seriously, did Admiral Willard and Admiral Donald consider that? Did they tell Admiral Willard and Donald they were bringing potassium iodine with them on their way over there? And think about, like, the guy from Fox News, what's his name, went over there as well, and Looks pretty sick these days. I haven't heard uh, much about Shep from Fox News, but 
at some point he was looking pretty gaunt and withered looking. Of course, they blame it on AIDS and he's gay and all that. And that's the obvious thing they're going to say. But he was over there uh, broadcasting and he even had the gall and nerve to say, uh, uh, laughing and making fun of people who are paranoid and wanted potassium iodine, right? Well, not so paranoid, Shep. It was actually for real. The, I've got the document screen capture out of the FOIA documents where before you go to Japan, make sure you pick up your potassium iodine. Now, at the time of Fukushima, were we stocked at our nuclear plants over here with potassium iodine? No. By and large, no. And you've heard a little story about them doing it up north around Illinois or Indiana or somewhere. That's probably just a little bit of propaganda. Because if you call your congressman and ask him, does your local nuclear plant, does the Turkey Point down in South Florida, do they stock enough potassium iodine to give everybody within that 10, just go 10 kilometer evacuation. Don't even go 50, right? But if you go 50 on Oyster, you're going to be up in New York. You know what? You're going to be up in New York, right? This is insane. So again, I said, people say, why are you so harsh on, on, on old Arnie Gundershill? I say, well, because I consider him quite insane. Oh, absolutely quite insane. I consider anyone insane. Well, he could be ignorant. It's possible. I don't buy that at his level, what he claims to be. Some people ignorant just don't know about nuclear power. But if you actually spent, I don't know, five hours studying it, I mean, five hours, that's going far. Because in 30 minutes, you realize that this is absolutely insane. But five hours, in, it's you realize it's so insane, you have to get involved trying to stop it. That's how crazy it is. I was a musician doing my own thing to a plume gate, right, and it changed my life forever. It's almost two uh, AF, two years after Fukushima now, and there's been no move, no uprising. I don't even see the the anti nuke organizations really talking about these for you documents, right? Go look those guys up, all of them. I'm not gonna name names right now, but the big organizations have their websites online, and they'll tell you a little about nuclear power and their anti nuke power. I don't see them screen capping the FOIA documents about the angst over Navy ships, doses to thyroid to children stuff, 35 rims to children in Alaska. I mean, wow. Okay, anyway, so I'm back to the article. So they run a lot of distractionary psyops. Keep that in mind. A lot of this stuff is bogus. Hoaxes, if you will. A hoax, if you will, okay? All right, so who can you trust in the media? Because no one's talking about this by and large. At this point, you can clearly see uh, I'm beginning to question and say this something's not right. And my articles are being subtly modified and, and changed, as we'll get to in just a second. So who can you trust in the alternative media? Considering the far-reaching implications of Plumegate, mind you, this is an election run-up for Obama, and Alex Jones wouldn't do screen captures and go in-depth, and, and I had to write articles calling him out. I mean, really, and thank you to Alexander Higgins, okay, for publishing alternative uh, media, infilt Operation Mockingbird-style alternative media infiltration. That was the article, and I guarantee on Alexander Higgins' uh, website, it gained enough traction, it got a lot of hits, more than I would have got on HP blog on WordPress, and I guarantee that I caught, that called their hand, and they said, look, we got to do something, and that's where we're at. They would talk about it, but not go in depth enough to change the course of the election. Of course, Romney wouldn't talk about it, Ron Paul wouldn't talk about it, uh, Perry wouldn't talk about it, none of them would talk about it. Why? Because it happened on Obama's watch. He says, something's up with that guy. They're scared to even talk about him. A tiny little guy like me broadcast on a pirate radio can say what I want. But give someone 50,000 subscribers on YouTube, it's over. It's over. Give them an alternative website and, and commercials on it and a, a Brock radio show online with all the uh, leprechaun music playing in the background of the news, it's over. you got to understand that. It's huge. Infiltration's huge. You'll be handicapped. You won't believe it. Sooner or later, though, people will come to that conclusion. A lot of people have. It's going from people attacking me and calling me crazy to people telling me now who all's you know, uh, corrupted that I didn't even know about. So everyone's searching for the trolls. Everyone's troll hunting. Everyone wants to call out the imposter. Now, that's big. Make a name for yourself. Who can you trust in the alternative media considering the far-reaching implications of Plumegate, the cover-up, the infant deaths, and the election year we find ourselves in? Can you trust a source unwilling to speak about this grave matter? And it's all provable. It's, I'm not getting distracted this time, but it is all provable in the documents. Is it possible the alternative media has been co-opted, infiltrated, and corrupted to a large degree? Hey, is it possible they just built it up fake from the beginning? Yeah, I'll put it to you that way. I think a lot of it was just built fake. It was fake from the start. They never infiltrated. They never co-opted. They never took it over. It was theirs from the start. I can, you want me to tell you how to make a troll farm, a troll den, troll network, shill network, shill circuit? It just takes money and a couple acts, actors 
They're hoaxers is what they are. They'll even confront Giuliani or someone and uh, Luke Rudaski will yell at someone. Right? What does that prove? Nothing to Patrick Penry except you just yelled at someone. Probably made yourself look like a fool because I would rather write a well-written article, post up a video, do a blog talk show, a lecture on it, and get the information out to the public at large in the public domain, shouting at someone, what has that ever done? I mean, you yell at a referee in a basketball game, right? Have you seen that? They'll go up to the referee and rah, 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 and they're yelling at the guy. The coach will do it. The players will even do it. So they'll get thrown out of the game over it. But has a referee ever changed his mind? Seriously, ever, ever. So it's kind of pointless, isn't it? It's kind of pointless. It is this author's opinion that any media source not shouting about Plumegate as loud as they can are likely controlled by the powers that be. Those sources are the most dangerous, the ones who gain your confidence by broadcasting the truth for years only to deceive you at the final moment when it will hurt you the most. So who do you trust? In the words of the famous philosopher J. Krishnamurti, maybe it's time we should think on these things. Right? And at the bottom, I, here's the part that was tampered with. I should say real quick, they, what they do is when you force their hand, they'll finally write about something, but they're trying to cloak themselves in, in me while they're doing it. They're not really going to cover it like they should, but they want to quote from me and make it look like they're with me or something like that. I, I do not endorse natural news. I do not endorse Mike Adams, General Stubblebine. I do not endorse the Infowars. I do not endorse Prison Planet. I do not endorse Paul Joseph Watson. I mean, I don't en endorse Alex Jones. They stole my intellectual property, put another person's name in there in order to muddy the waters. They did this as well before on the Stratford article, long before Molly Gate. There's a Stratford article from truther.org, if I'm not mistaken, and that one they muddied the waters onto. Very clever how in the title, in the key words, they mix things up. So if you type in Jones-Israel connection, it will go back to their old article that they rehashed, republished, and did it in such a way as to draw you away from another very damaging article. Does hiring someone from Stratford mean you're bad? Not necessarily. Just the thing is, we're looking for a pure source, right? A love-based, pure source, right? That's what I'm talking about. That's what my song's about. I don't know if you can feel the love or not, but that's all I'm all about right now. All about, I don't just say much love. I actually freaking mean it, right? I mean it. I know time for hate or going after people or any of that. If you're a troll right now, they're coming after you, man. I don't even have to do anything. It's just people picking up on this. It's and 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 it's like a uh, it's like a hobby for them, troll hunting, if you will. That's a hobby. For your documents, please take time to examine both the 395-page document and the 186-page document in order to more fully comprehend the nature of the cover-up. And just in those two alone, you can see, hey, it's got to be huge. FEMA told to stand down. Stand down. Hey, what about Three Mile? What about Chernobyl? What about all these other incidents in the documents they say they know all about? Why would you tell them to stand down when other countries are given rainwater warnings, green leafy vegetables, and they're further away in France and UK? We're right in the Pacific jet stream. Wow. Wow. Okay, I'm going to say all of this information has been forwarded to both mainstream and alternative media sources, including InfoWars and Prison Planet. And that was taken out, the including InfoWars and Prison Planet. It just, they, they ended it on uh, uh, mainstream and alternative media sources. And so that I had a problem with that. I really did because I was saying to myself, this, I even sent it to Alex Jones. See, that's the thing. And I have the records of all that. I sent him all the documentation. I sent him my article. I, I even told him without the ego, without the self, without the me, without the Tony, without Patrick Penry needs credit for this. It wasn't about that. I said, I don't care who publishes this article. This is almost word for word. Anyone publish it is what I told him. Put your own guy's name on it. You know, me and Shazam are like that. We had a discussion the other night, my friend Shazam, and that's one thing we, without even, we just kind of said it at the same time pretty much, is we had come to the point to get the information out. So, I mean, I don't want to say desperate, but so open am I to just getting it out and any avenue to get it out. I almost don't care if someone puts their name on my article and says they wrote it. I really don't care. I don't care. Do you keep the intent the same? I guess ultimately in the end with Jones, at least the article's there. They don't do the screen captures. It could be worse. But again, you know, I go back and say I wrote enough articles, and thanks to Alexander Higgins, kind of made him have to do it, kind of made him have to do it. So, again, now I really can't give much credit there at all. I can't because if the Associated Press is filing for freedom of information pertaining to Fukushima, but InfoWars isn't, but Alex Jones knows all about the Sunshine Project and won't shut up about it all the time on his broadcast, so he knows all about freedom of information. He knows darn well about what it is, what it does how you access it, how you petition for it, how you file for it, how he's got the money to do it. He's got the people to do it. Why didn't he do it? 
Why didn't he do it? And that's when I realized, hey, there is a huge cover-up going on, and, and these people are, are, are they're compromised at the very least. Based on the fact that I sent them all the stuff, haunted the YouTube threads, and wrote enough articles, finally when they do talk about it, guess what? It's superficial. They misrepresent the fatality number, which I had corrected but could never get Bob Tuscan to do it after repeated attempts to get him to, and they're perpetuating disinformation. Now it's all over. If you go in, and I've got a number of videos on this, it's now erroneous information that's all over the net, thanks to people copying Prison Planet articles without checking. Thanks to Prison Planet posting stuff without checking. Thanks to guys like Bob Tuscan never made that correction. You know, I did immediately under the thread the very next day. Within 24 hours, I caught that in my article, went back and made a correction, said, no, it wasn't that many. It was 832 infant deaths and 13,000 something over on, on the early Sherman Mangano study. I made that correction, but they never changed it in my article. It's changed in this one because, I, like I told Bob on my HP blog, I can make things the way I want them. People don't touch my stuff and mess with it, right? So at that point, I, I'm thinking to myself, something's up with the alternative media. And if Jones isn't going to report on this, and I've sent all the information, there's no way he could have not gotten it. And this is not just me. If you dig into it, this happens all the time with Jones. They send him stuff they won't touch. They won't touch. Why? They're told not to. They're controlled opposition. So I figured this out early when I wrote my alternative media infiltration operation, a Mockingbird style infiltration article. I knew something was up, and I began connecting the dots. I said, who's on Alex Jones show a lot? Who are his good friends? Who are his buddies? Who goes in studio? But, and who at the same time won't talk about the world's largest provable cover-up, many more deaths than 9-11, proof in the documents. We don't have to argue about holograms or space beams or super nanothermite or none of that. It's in the documents. Who's not talking about it? And immediately I said, well, Ron Paul, and Ron Paul's on a show, and Kokesh from RT, and RT won't talk about it, and Mark Dice, and Mark Dice won't talk about it. I'm like, wow, that's all I can say right there. And that should just sink into you for a minute if you're new to all this. And I know it's harsh cognitive dissonance because you, you don't want to believe the size of the conspiracy. You don't want to believe it's possible. But I assure you they have all the money. And they print money if they don't have the money. And they invade country and take your gold and shut you down. they got plenty of gold. You know, Maybe it's not in Fort Knox anymore. I noticed today on my HP blog, my Fort Knox roof hole, T5 tornado tears rooftop hole in Fort Knox, um, gold seen missing or, or whatever. It gets to 80 hits a week sometimes. Some, someone will post it up, and they love that one, right? So maybe the gold's not here, but in some other country, they got the money to do all this. They really do. Do they have the technology? Sure, they got the technology. They got technology we don't even know about. We don't even know about. Literally, seriously, could be a base on the moon by now. I say that just logistically. Speaking, if you do the mathematics, if just the physics of it all, and think about what it would take and look at the suppressed technology they don't want you to know about, like the Searle effect generator, anti-magnetism, other technologies other than rocket-powered craft, I tell you the De Beers diamond mine in uh, Alaska is very likely the launching point for these operations where there's it's not a rocket, there's no flame in the sky. These are anti-magnetic crafts that float from here to the moon, right? It's very easily they could have built a moon base. Now, this is the same concept that Mark Dice deleted my comments on. I didn't even say there's a moon base. I just said you can't prove there's not unless you can go to the dark side of the moon right now and take us all there with you. You cannot prove it, right? Comments deleted. Again, part of the uh, conspiracy, and that's what they don't want you to. They don't want you to have open-minded talk. They want you to dumb down to the point where you don't even have these critical thought discussions at all until so you're talking about headless alien babies and Bigfoot and all this other radical leprechauns or whatever. That, can it be proven? Can it be disproven? I don't know. Maybe they can't be disproven, nor can they be proven. And that, and thus it would be a waste of time unless it's something we can, like I say, if you can tell me there's a, a battle off the West Coast between extraterrestrials and the Navy and submerged alien bases, and, the, and that's wonderful. For me, that's entertainment. For me, it's total entertainment. I might even read the article if you say there's a, a UFO found in Pakistan in a mountain in a cave, and the German chancellor's headed there, and Obama's going there to look at this, uh, the Zoroaster's <laughs> UFO. Hey, maybe it's even true. And the fact of the matter is nothing I can do about it. There's nothing we can do about it. I have to act on what I think I can do something with, what I can change something. If they find a UFO hidden in a mountain cave, uh, Hattrick Penry is not ever going to get to see it, have access to it, fly in it, touch it, taste it, hold it, feel it, anything. Any, you just don't. You just don't. So I'm not worried about it. Shape-shifting reptilians after a few pints, yes, I'll talk about them. You want to have a cold Guinness with me and talk about shape-shifting reptiles? I'd love to. 
a demonic possession, whatever. I'd love to. Bigfoot, find a, a spaceship, whatever. Okay, but generally I'm covering issues that can be proven in documentation. That's kind of the big thing for me now. Freedom of Information Act, actually. It's quite beautiful. And if they ever go to take it away and they're shutting it down slowly, I went over that in a broadcast one day about the uh, Marion Breckner Center for uh, the Freedom of Information here at University of Florida that's kind of downsized after the economic crash. See, when you when you purposefully cause a crash, there's a lot of good things you can do. One of them is shutting down things like Freedom of Information Centers, downsizing, don't crank out so many students who go out and teach more students to teach more students to do what? Utilize and access Freedom of Information. What is that? That means all these documents and all this classified stuff, You can, if you have an idea what it is, you can attempt to. It's not always granted, but you can file, you can petition and send, for instance, to the NRC and say, I want documents pertaining to uh, emails and phone calls from Fukushima for these two weeks or whatever. And they, they will say, well, we have these or we don't have these. We can or we can't release these. And if you have a, a clear, concise idea of what it is you're asking them for in the way of transcripts or documents, they can often provide them and have to legally by law. They can redact, though. They can redact. And recently, some of the redaction around the Navy ships not being moved because of angst, right, the redaction gets heavy. Really, what does that mean to me? Well, we're not talking military secrets, right? We're talking naval ship locations. Well, folks, I hate to break your bubble on this from a satellite reconnaissance. You can Google and see the probably ships down in the shipyard, right? Anybody can. There are no real secrets there. You know, I think what they're trying to suppress is not nuclear secrets and that the Mark I containment is highly sought after around the world. It's simply not. It's a failed system. If you look from the 79 lawsuit, if you look from some of the earlier documentation in the 70s where things were, these safety systems would go to one valve. It would be down to one valve at times that we would rely on. There's no backups, right? There would be no backups. So it's just a very poorly, you know, they weren't, and, and don't be fooled for the, well, we're on a learning curve and we're going to learn from Fukushima, right? That's total bunk. Anyone talking that nonsense, again, you're either ignorant or quite insane, quite insane. Because you just, you can't take another chance again. You really can't. There's no learning curve when it's a third time. And it's more than that. There's a saltwater reactor, I'm told, that, that's melted down over here that was suppressed. There's other incidents more than just nuclear meltdown, right? It could be like Hanford. There's a, uh, a nuclear waste problem there. It's a whole major thing going on there. It's too much for me to even talk about because I don't know that much about it. I just keep hearing consistently in the background this one particular site is nothing but problem after problem. It's, and, and, again, it's like Bechtel is an example there where they drop the tank in early knowing it's flawed, knowing it has a crack or some design flaw or some flaw to it to get this bonus. If the tank's installed ahead of schedule, you get a $68 million, don't quote me on that, it was a multi-million dollar bonus. So, well, they drop the tank in, but then later they have leaks. Well, if you're only fined a million dollars, you know, for the uh, hasty install, well, then you've just made 67, hypothetically speaking. Again, that's not the exact number, but it's a multi-million dollar figure. And the fines and the, the, the punishment is relatively small. And this is very similar to the banking industry being charged nearly every year. I keep hearing about Bank of America. you got Wachovia, formerly Wachovia. Now they're Wells Fargo. But don't be fooled. These are laundering billions of dollars of drug money every year. Billions of dollars. Billions of – what was the fine? $111 million for Bank of America. And if I'm not mistaken, it was hundreds of billions of dollars of drug money. Even Nabisco, the cookie manufacturer. That's right. Oreo cookies busted – in, in the European Union for an unfettered, un, un, unfair competitive trade advantage, an unfair uh, trade advantage in that they were laundering and using drug money. And so they were, there was a lawsuit with the European Union against the Bisco cookie company because they said, hey, if you're going to use drug money that you're laundering, of course you can force your way in above all of our cookie manufacturers. Right, the English cookie company is now surrounded by five Nabisco cookie companies, right? And that's how it works. That's exactly how it works. And that's all part of the infiltration, the conspiracy, and, and then that's how they work. This is a corporatocracy. It's beyond fascism now. The more broadcasts I do, I'm kind of changing my mind about things. And I see in these documents in the Freedom of Information pertaining to Fukushima, it's public, free to the public, you can read in there where the the characters are saying that the industry, in other words, Bechtel and GE and these other big uh, groups, 
are going to decide the role the Fed, federal government will play in this disaster and all the stuff going on. And they're very clear about that. The federal government is doing what the corporations tell it to do. And so if you say fascism is a merging of the corporate and the state, well, we may be beyond that now, where the state is the corporate. The state just freaking is corporate for all intents. It's almost as if, like, the CEO from GE, and, and I think they do, right? The banking guys are all in it. It's exactly right. It just... The corporatocracy is the government now. It's just one big, giant, happy corporatocracy forcing us with this archaic, dangerous nuclear energy. We knew in the late 70s that each plant, to have a nuclear power plant, low-level ionizing radiation would escape. There's no way impossible to stop it from escaping on a low level, and people would die. People would die. Why was that forced upon us? Well, let me ask you this. Why were the train tracks taken up and not allowed to, and this is an admitted conspiracy that we know is true, the conspiracy to take public transportation in America and suppress it and promote single fossil fuel combustion, not even Henry Ford's hemp-powered, uh, hemp-fueled, and hemp-built car, not the engine block, obviously, but the door panels and what have you. It was, that's an amazing thing. But no, we didn't even get that. This is a petrochemical that we have to send you know, boats around the world to collect tar sands in, in Canada and Alaska and what have you. We've got to wreck the environment. We've got to deal with the sheiks over in the Mideast, and, and we're entailed in wars all the time to get oil. Why? Because it can monopolize it. Unless you have a uh, oil-producing piece of property, right, then you're screwed on that one. You really are. We've got to pay $4, $3. One day it'll be 6 7 $8. Who knows? Who knows? When they're suppressing tech, tech at the same time, the... Solar cell tech, as I've been clear, I believe it's the Union of, of Science, Concerned Scientists, did the study and said, and this was back in 2010, there was over uh, 5,000 suppressed patents for alternative or new energy, whatever you want to call it, here in the U.S. alone. They'll seize it or they'll restrict it or they'll hold it indefinitely, whatever it takes to perpetuate the monopoly and force the nuclear, force the coal, force the the gasoline on us. Like I said, J Japan had a production water car before the coincidental earthquake ruined all that for them. One of the texts they were showing us over there was a production water car, a little small uh, subcompact, nothing fancy, not a, nothing fancy at all, but you could literally pour water, preferably distilled clean water into the tank, although technically you could urinate it and or pour salt water, it just the salt would cake up and you'd have to clean the uh, the, the the storage where the water goes into into the tank, a fuel tank essentially, because the water they apply electricity and it splits the hydrogen from the oxygen. You have two flammable gases there. Oxygen. We already know someone sitting in the hospital with an oxygen tank. Don't smoke around them. For crying out loud, you can blow us all up. Are you crazy? So we know that's very flammable. Hydrogen the same way. Hydrogen cars. You've heard all. Of them. What they want you to do is have a hydrogen car. We have to go stop at their hydrogen station and fill up. But I tell you, it's all over the place, right? <laughs> You don't need to go for them. It's same with cannabis. It, it has miracle curing restorative powers. May even cure cancer, but you can't have it because anyone can produce it, and then anyone could cure themselves, and the hospitals collapse, the doctors collapse, the pharmaceutical collapse. Again, a non-love-based system anyway, right? That doctor wants the Porsche. That doctor wants his Ferrari. The doctor's got a huge house, girlfriends, cocaine, all that stuff. And that's true. I don't make that up. I knew a dentist here through a friend way back in the day when I was into drugs and when I was basically a hoodlum and a criminal. And we went to this guy's house one time, and my connection is going to buy cocaine from the guy. And on our way there, I'm finding out this guy's a dentist. I'm like, really? He's a dentist? And he's on cocaine? And that wasn't half of it. We got there to buy the cocaine. Again, this many years ago. I don't do drugs. I'm six years off of drugs now, coming up on that anniversary in March of this year, six years clean. But back in the day now, and, and we go to this house, and there's a dentist there, and, and we're snorting our cocaine and everything, and, and the dentist, Mom, he's an old guy bald on the head already. He's got to be like 50s or something. I'm amazed he's even doing cocaine. I'm thinking, this guy's a little old, isn't he? I'm like 20-something years old. And his mom comes in, Grandma comes in, and she says, did you save one of those lines for me? And I, I'm just thinking to myself, this is incredible. This old lady who's like 80 years old wants to make sure she got her line of cocaine. So, yeah, that's how crazy it can get. All right, I got a little distracted there, but that's a good story. And even though some of my the younger days were, I was a miscreant and quite misguided, and what can I say? The system is broken. The family is broken. The churches are broken. The schools are broken. The government's broken. I just did what I was programmed to do. I did what I was programmed to do up until the point that I realized I was being programmed to do those acts, right? It wasn't completely me. That's not me. That's not me at all. Like I say, love-based system now. I know who I am now. 
but you can get your mind clouded by the system in America by the propaganda and the constant bombardment with the television and the commercials and the sports and the half-naked girls and all that. It will take a toll. Eventually, you will become socially automated. And you'll do exactly what you won't care about Plume Gate. Those people in the first herd, I can tell them about this. Their eyes glaze over, cognitive dissonance, the desert of the real, and then they're out of there to their football game and their basketball game. And they're, Some people's coming around, though, but it's a process. And I've been very clear that it seems to me that Alex Jones can put five people to sleep by the time I can wake one. Obama can put a thousand of them down, tell them nuclear energy is clean and emission-free. They'll believe it. They'll never question him. They would have no reason to. They won't even double check. They won't go check that because it's Obama saying it. Mitt Romney said it too. Not to pick on Obama. Color means nothing to me. I think you're a crazy fool if you allow nuclear power to exist in the form it's now. If that's any use at all, it would be on a very limited, small scale. And it would be very uh, accountable. There would be such accountability and oversight. It would be incredible because we're now paying a very a stiff penalty in deaths per year. I mean, take Fukushima aside, this shutdown uh, book on the lawsuit from 79 shows clearly each plant that's built, you're going to have low-level ionizing. Hey, at the end of every year, they're allowed to release. They're allowed to release during the year, and it's always underneath a certain level. Isn't that nice? Always. But when you read this guy's the lawsuit and some of the testimony, I now begin to understand where they say, they have to allow an effluent. That's what the NRC calls it. It's a radioactive discharge. They have to allow it because as the, fuel, the nuclear fuel process, there's the parts of it, it's inescapable that low-level ionizing radiation will be, be released. That's as simple as I can put it to you. Again, I'm not an expert, but I'm reading from experts. I will attempt to communicate and extrapolate that to you in, in layman's terms. It's going to have to be because, again, like I say, I'm learning this as I go along. Although, you know, interestingly enough, also I read where they talked about this, someone else, I forget where I read about, someone saying the same thing. They were around people in the nuclear industry but never knew anything about it the whole time. And that's like I say with my dad, although he taught nuclear physics at the University of Florida and he's, uh, worked at uh, Brookhaven and uh, went to the one in Tennessee. He's been to some of these larger laboratories uh, around the country. He didn't talk about nuclear power. We didn't really have – had I gone into physics in, in college, that would have maybe changed. But until I went into that field, they really – there wasn't a lot of talk about nuclear power. You know, I find that strange, too, because you would think it's something everyone would – discuss but it seems to be occult to some extent where if you want to know about it you're going to you can't find out all about it in high school it's just you know you can find out a little bit but that's just a brushing over you really have to go to a higher level and and put your time and do the four years and even beyond that so it is kind of occult okay and i've covered plume gate pretty extensively and now what we want to talk about is some recent developments in the quote unquote so-called alternative media which